everybody. This week for Radio Labyrinth Presents, we thought we'd dig into the archives. Why, and find an interview that doesn't have a video to go along with it. Please enjoy Radio Labyrinth Presents Interviews with Tim, Jeff, Steph, and a little guy we called Ira as we interview comedians Ron White and Doug Stanhope at the Punchline Comedy Club. This is Radio Labyrinth. We are recording live uh, in the Punchline, 10.39 on a Monday night. We just finished seeing uh, Doug Stanhope, uh, Ron White. Who else was here, Special Jeff? Special guest. Brett Erickson. Brett Erickson. From Roast Battle. Right. Yeah. And uh, Jamie Bendel, the uh, proprietor here. Hi, Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Hey, hey, thanks for having us. Yeah. No, this is awesome. This is a treat. Yeah. For us. For real. Thank yeah, you so much. Walk by. Look at Stanhope. Yeah. Yeah, there he is. Oh, Jamie, get up. <laughs> get the fuck out of here, Jamie. I don't need headphones. But you can tell the owner to beat it. Of course, you're going to pick him. There's six people on this podcast. One's the owner. Hey, fuck off. <laughs> Hey, this is What's Doug Stanhope. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't commit to being on your podcast because I knew this show was going to go weird. I don't know how weird, and the night's not even half over. You feel good about it? We had a blast, man. Yeah. Oh, we loved it. Fucking well, we're, killer. We're getting on the Ron night. White bus, oh. Oh, okay. and Bird Cloud is going to do a private show at the uh, Ron White mansion that I've heard oh. so much about. So no once, shit. and we didn't know that till the show was already in progress. So yeah, it, it kind of fucked up everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, I forgot to you do my that, whole closer is about my girlfriend. Uh, if you know me, let's she, do it now. No, no, no. I I, I'm gonna burn material on this. <laughs> person. Come on, we need the numbers. Don't blame you. No, I, I wouldn't either. Uh, this is rock and roll, man. It was so much fun. There's one other time we, we got to do that where we introduced, uh, hey, will you tolerate? I know the show is running long. Will you tolerate some <laughs> local talent? That was great. And you could see people flinch but have to <laughs> agree and clap. Uh, and then we brought out Roseanne <laughs> oh. uh, from where she grew up in Salt Lake. And they fucking went ballistic right. like they did tonight for Ron White. It was great. Well, because we were sitting back here and we saw Ron, so I kind of had a feeling that that was going to happen. But for everybody else, yeah, they went ape shit. It yeah. was killer. I'm glad that you're back and on the road, man. And uh, going back years and years and years, like hearing you on all those fucking XM shows and shit. But I have all the CDs, so I would just listen to them over and over again. So it's, it's nice to, to see it, especially at a show like this. It was fucking great. So thank you. It's coming back together. There's Bird Cloud. Bird Cloud, where are you playing? Hey, when does this podcast go out? Tomorrow. 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 Where Come are you on playing over. on Saturday? Bird Cloud. Bird. 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 Do you know what that... Melrose and what? Hi. I, I never heard of that. Uh, this is Matt from Bird Club. We're going to be... Listen, you don't want him on your podcast. Shit interview. 7.30 this Saturday. This Saturday? Wow. Yeah. All right. Yes, I... I, I, I we'll look forward to that. I knew I'd be drunk by now. Sorry. Good. That's my manager going, making sure we tip the... Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Did they tell you where they're playing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, she did. She got that in there. I didn't know the Saturday. Tour, but... Yeah. Well, it just is very go to hectic. Bird Cloud. Yeah, go to Bird Cloud. Uh, Isn't it weird it's having fun bartenders? What is? What does she do? What is the show? Oh no, Bird Cloud. They're musicians. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was a sad sack of shit walking around Williamsburg. If you if you look up listeners, if you Google search Bird Cloud Vodka Soda Bird and watch that video. <laughs> You will be as hooked as every single person that's ever seen that video. And All you right. could close the podcast on that if we you do, do that. such things. Done. Okay. We'll do that at least. Do it. Absolutely. Brooklyn? I'm going to do it no, right now. From Nashville. <laughs> do, 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 uh, and uh, is, is the bus here? <laughs> the bus is here. You don't have to <laughs> stay, man. I'm talking to this Ron White bus. How, how's, how's Bingo? Yeah, yeah. Yes. You go. One story. Yeah, speaking of your girlfriend, how is Bingo doing? She, Bingo is doing great except for overstimulation. The oh. amount of people a merch booth would crush her the same way I fucking hate it. Yeah. There's nothing worse than the merch booth. And yes. 
I know people want to get a picture, yeah. but when you're on stage, it's like a fist fight. <laughs> Where when you get off, you're like, "What yeah. just happened?" Like, I, I I need to take in what just happened. And if you enjoyed your set on any level, you can't bask wanna, in it. I don't want to go out and be a politician immediately and shake hands and mm-hmm. try to listen to stories I've seen you, from right? drunk people. And if you had a bad set, it's even worse. I don't yeah. want to see the what I Some think are looks of derision. <laughs> they don't work. <laughs> well, you definitely well, Ron White's here, too. Yeah. Ron, hey, this right? is the Ron and Doug Jordan show now. <laughs> you guys can take off. All right, let's see. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> we got this. Ron, I saw So Smith's old bar tomorrow night. Yes. And what kind of... Is it going to be the same kind yeah, of thing? It's going to be a little rowdier. Shit. Never come to my shows in the same tour if fucking hate it. Uh, don't even come to my shows in the same decade. <laughs> you want to give it ten solid years uh, before you come out and see me again, and that way I'll have a good You're solid... You're like an old Chappelle. Uh, very, very old Chappelle. <laughs> Every ten years. I got I got some new stuff for you. And, and I don't mind rolling it out either. It's been about uh, ten years since we saw Ron at the punchline for the first time. I think he... No, it's been longer than that, man. Open, it's open 2003. for Bobcat Goldthwait. God, wait! He opened. You open for Bob? Yeah, Kent? yeah. I, I featured for him. I think, oh, uh, God. or whatever. And uh, yeah, it was uh, nine million years ago. Yeah, it was. I've been working this <laughs> back when I had real drug problems. <laughs> 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 I yeah, that's this little phony hey, bullshit hey, I got going on now. You bring this up. Is Kathy here? Because you told me a story, and I still remember this from whatever, 94, whenever we were in Oklahoma City in that pile of shit comedy condo. You told me about uh, being fired by this very club yeah. for doing acid on stage. I, was, uh, I remember that, motherfucker. That's putting it pretty lightly. Uh, it was it, they, they, they actually had another club, and it was uh, called Punchline Underground, and uh, it was at, at just downtown L.A. They, I mean, L.A., Atlanta. Atlanta. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it was a really cool area that they tried to make it work so there was hooters down there and some nightclubs and there was a really cool comedy club very victorian they spent a lot of money on it wrap around balcony on sat 50 people up there sat 350 people overall big tall ceiling and uh and it was new year's and the other comedians in town that which was at the uh improv and buckhead and uh and then the comedy or the punchline, and then the other one that the Peta owned uh, up in uh, whatever. Listen, Smyrna. no one listening to this knows Chris Peta. <laughs> okay, fuck, all right, fuck, fuck this Chris Peta. Okay, all right, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He's hey. Billy Gardell's manager. <laughs> You're exactly right. Yeah. It's Billy Gardell's manager. Then he does that. And uh, 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 so, a, a, a small aside. At one point, I go, Billy Gardell. What happened to that guy? Like he drifted <laughs> out of comedy. Oh, he's been on a hit sitcom <laughs> with the number one movie star in the entire world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know how it's. It's really. It's amazing what happened to him. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Uh, you and, just uh, sit at a bar a lot of the time. You go. Oh, he doesn't come to the bar anymore. He must have drifted. Right. He must have fucking. Wonder what happened to him. What a sad story. That Billy Gardell story. <laughs> Yeah, so, Tim, so, yeah, me and Billy Gardell carried uh, Tim Wilson to his grave. Uh, we, me and Billy Gardell were both poor yeah, pole bars uh, just to drag this motherfucker into it. I, 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 I'm going to drag you back to where you did acid. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. We'll okay. About that. So I got a deal. We've all got a deal. It's uh, all the headliners I know, and we're all going to do acid. And they're all going to do this acid they're getting from this friend uh, that we all we all knew, and we always had the best acid. And I wasn't getting my acid from him. I was. I had two pits of water acid in my wallet that I'd gotten in Alabama. And so it's Saturday night. We don't have a Sunday night show. And the guy that's the feature act plays a fucking didgeridoo. <laughs> <laughs> fucking part of the fucking act. The part of and the so the whole week, I'm like, you can hear it through walls and shit. And I'm like, what a talentless fucking piece of shit this guy is. And so... On New Did Year's, you really I started... hate mail filing? <laughs> oh, yeah, they're coming in. All those fucks. So what happened was, I I started thinking, well, well, we'd rented a hotel in Midtown, and we were all going to eat the acid at a certain amount of time right after the second show, and we're going to meet at this hotel room. We're all going to trip and party. It's going to be fun, right? It's a good plan. Well, 
I start thinking, well, how good can my acid be? Because it's fucking blotter acid from Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out it probably wasn't made in Alabama. It was probably an import acid from a lab in California somewhere. Because 30 minutes, I, I ate it right before, I mean, right after I came off stage, I was like, oh, my acid probably sucks. <laughs> and uh, fucking, I just eat two hits of it, and I'm just on my back 30 minutes later in the green room, just going, oh, fuck, are you kidding me? From Alabama? <laughs> so, so, I start hearing the didgeridoo. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I know I'm kind of close to the didgeridoo. Wow. And I'm like way too fucked up to do a set of any kind. And they were looking for me. And the, I was in the green room with the lights out. And uh, and I knew they were looking for me because they'd come in, but they would notice the lights were out. So they would assume I wasn't in there, but I was. I was laying on the floor tripping my balls off. And uh, so they... Uh, they go out and they finally they come in and they find me and they're like, Ron, you got to do a set. This is New Year's Eve, second show. <laughs> Most shows sold out. <laughs> Biggest show that they have all year long. And I have made a fucking total miscalculation <laughs> of just how hard I need to be tripping to make For the record, fucking... in, in the book that I uh, is coming out soon, I, my worst show was doing mushrooms on New Year's Eve in Alaska. Wow. Just, <laughs> right. Every time I have, you, I, I hear that's a why similar we love story, each other. I got to, oh, I got to put this fucking, I got to put this out. I have a similar story. Right. So they're, they're leading me. I remember yours. They're leading me out there. And uh, and I'm just telling myself, okay, Ron, you got to, all right, just don't, if you think of something funny, don't say it. Just, <laughs> just don't say it. Just fucking keep yourself calm. <laughs> just do the show as you as written. Do it as written. And uh, so I go out there, and it's a, it's a really tall uh, room, and it's got a big high stage. Sure, you're not in it, like, like the, the fucking banana club in fucking Cincinnati. You're in a cone at this point. <laughs> well, I but you're. I'm just saying you're up away from the crowd. It's a high stage, and and then a really high ceiling. So you're not in it like this, like oh, a small okay. cloud. Right. You're up away from. So they really the can't see the details high. of my eyes, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, but you can see the details of theirs. Oh, I could. Well, I had to make them blow out the table candles because there was <laughs> Chelsea. <laughs> There were 50, 50 table candles dancing in my fucking <laughs> eyes. And I'm like, well, I can't do this at all. There's no way I can do this. <laughs> so they blew them out. That's great. And and, uh, and so I'm, I'm doing that. I'm just murdering. And I can see the rhythm of the material. I'm just beating this crowd to death. I was doing nine shows a week. I was so goddamn good back then. <laughs> just fucking knocking the shit out of them. And I... And I drank a beer on stage then, and I ran out of beer. And uh, the uh, the set was so fun that the, the the staff started watching it and quit waiting on table. <laughs> and That's just, when you know it's going bad. Well, when the staff is interested. I, I, well, I, I didn't know that at the time. I really didn't. I thought it was going fine. I thought you were out there like Doc Ellis pitching the no hitter. Right. Yes. Yeah. Tripping my fucking balls up. Like, and then going it's well. It's not like there's a bartender going, "Oh, this is going to be so much better the eighth time." <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, like, we never. So I. Anyway, they. I ran out of beer and I don't say anything, <laughs> but they just the, the the staff was watching. They just brought me another beer and then uh, just put it on the stand. So for whatever reason, I said. Ah, look at there. If I make you laugh, they give me a beer. Later, if I make you jump through a hoop, they're going to give me a big eight ball of blow. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody laughed. <laughs> and you heard somebody drop a tray of glasses in the back and then a long pause. And, and, then, uh, and then it was like the rest of the set was like... Uh, it was like the end of uh, Young Frankenstein when Gene Wilder, the whole thing's gone to shit. He's just trying to dance his way past the last fucking 20 minutes. Of it. And, uh, and it was horrible. And, uh, and I was booed. And, and it was a special night for a lot of people. So, so let's, like, cause we Want to recap it? it? I, 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 could, I, I saw all the to-go shit going oh, out. <laughs> so we got to leave. But uh. the firing was... Were any of the people involved in this punchline involved in that f firing? Chris well, in, in, indirectly, we said no one knows Chris Petta, but <laughs> Yeah, he was here earlier, and uh, but anyway, they yeah. Well, I got to go get paid. 
<laughs> I don't have a Sunday show. I've just done my last show of the week. So now I got to go face the management. And quite frankly, getting kicked out of this chain for doing drugs is kind of like getting kicked out of prison. It's really hard to do. It's really hard. I don't know how hard you have to fuck up to get kicked out of prison, but I got kicked out of fucking prison here. For but when I admitted it, I was like, okay, I get it. I'm fucking all right. I was blazing. And, and actually, I get I I, I get my I, the guy goes, were you a little fucked up on stage tonight, Ron? And I said. I'll take a check. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't take a check. So, I'm, I'm done, right? I've done this, you know. So we go back to the. I, 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 I'm take. I'm on a fucking Marta train ride straight to where the fucking hotel we rented is. We're all going to be tripping. They didn't get their ass in. Oh, no. I'm the only one fucked up. <laughs> and so and we're having a hotel room with all these fucking people that are sober and I'm like beating balloons <laughs> off the fucking wall. I'm going nutty, nutty, nutty. And, uh, and so they're giving me fucking pills that trying to get me to come down blue pills green pills red pills i'm like motherfucker and i don't come down at all and i'm they all go to bed because they're bored of me and i'm still fucking making noise out there and marta doesn't run to take me back to my hotel room until like dawn or something like that so it gets to be dawn so i think i i go to the bus stop up the hill i take one stop to the train take that non-stop to my hotel and I'll be fine. Great. Great. I'm walking up the hill, and the pills start hitting me. And I start, I look like an elephant that's been shot in the ass with a tranquilizer dart. I'm just, I start staggering slow up this hill. And, I, and some people help me onto the bus, and I'm like, hey, whoa, yeah. And then they put me on MARTA, which is a train that goes back and forth across the city all day long, back and forth across the city. And there... I pass out completely. And I have a fever blister that breaks, and I start bleeding from the mouth. And I'm really pale. And I've been tripping all night. And now I'm out on Xanax and whatever they've give, given me. And I just bounce across the town for hours. Just back, passed out. Nobody would talk to me. I, I did, nobody saved my life. Nobody did anything. And eventually I woke up and figured it all out. And I was like, okay, I'm in Sandy Springs. <laughs> And I've probably been here seven times. <laughs> <laughs> so I go back to my hotel and sleep it off. And the didgeridoo never did, makes a reappearance. Did the, uh, did the, oh, God, did, no. did the check cash? <laughs> <laughs> it did, but I was not invited back for 10 years. <laughs> and, uh, which, uh, and that was not the first time that it happened. So uh, you know, I was like, okay, I get it. Every once in a while, I'll fucking knock one out of the fucking park. Every and, 10 uh, years, I don't I'm get to no. come back. It's been so. 10 years since I've been here, so hopefully 10 years more. Uh, Ron White, it was a pleasure uh, to be Man, on your Doug podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You, Doug. Hey, right. this is Doug Stanhope and... Ron White. And if you're listening to this drop, it's because we've passed away <laughs> and they need ratings. Yeah.